हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आई एम रिकॉर्डिंग दिस लेक्चर फॉर सेम फोर ऑनर स्टूडेंट एंड दिस इज अ लेक्चर अबाउट चार्ल्स लैम क्वेश्चन इट्स बीन क्वाइट अ लॉन्ग टाइम सिंस वी मेट और टॉक एज वी आर ऑल अंडर होम क्वारंटीन राइट नाउ ड्यू टू कोविड नाइनटीन सो आई हैव डिसाइडेड दैट i'll do this question answer session in this voice over online video lecture so if you remember anything where we stopped uh, we had already completed the two essays that we have of charles lamb dream children a reverie and the superannuated man and we have finished uh, studying both the essays in class and if you have been checking the google classroom i have also uploaded or posted all the pdfs uh, regarding these two texts in the google classroom itself and only the questions were left so i've decided that i'll do this in a video lecture i'll give you the questions and i'll discuss the possible answer in points in this video lecture uh, i will also upload a pdf separately uh, that has the questions so let's start uh, this session today now if you look at the pdf uh, which i will upload along with this video lecture uh, i have divided uh, the questions from both the text into three uh, separate parts Uh, the first part being the questions on dream children itself the text which are the text specific questions specific to dream children the second part being questions on the text superannuated man which is also like the first text specific questions and the third part which are the questions on charles lamb in general and these questions you have to write with reference to uh the two essays that you have in your syllabus so we have divided the questions into three parts i will begin with uh, the first part that is the questions on dream children which are very text specific and i will also try to discuss some points uh, which uh, will be important for you uh, when you try to arrange and uh, make a final answer for these questions so the first question is uh, discuss the significance of the title of the essay and why is it called a reverie reverie so if you see the title of dream children there are actually two specific parts of the title so most of you will focus on the dream children but it is also important uh, not to leave out the a uh, reverie part because that also plays a very important role in a question that is asking specifically about the title so we'll discuss two parts both dream children and or reverie separately now i've told you this in class that dream children what it refers to of course you know the main main element of the dream children that is the two dream children that lamb had with alice that is john and alice who are, does do appear uh, at the end of the essay and uh, sorry throughout the essay but there are three instances of dream children that are in the essay that you have to mention that is the first one being the ballad of the children which is a norfolk ballad remember in the first part of the essay when uh, lamb actually goes to this mansion uh, of his which her, which is grandmother took care of there was this ballad of the children the two children who were killed by their by their uncle for their property and this is the first instance of dream children the two dream children the second being the apparitions or ghost of the two infants which mrs field saw during the night sliding up and down the staircase so in mrs field's mansion the norfolk mansion uh, these two apparitions or the two ghosts of these children who were murdered by their uncle do appear uh, that is called an apparition so this is the second uh, 
element of uh, second instance of dream children that we see in this essay the third instance is of course uh, which about which this essay is about uh, that is alice and john the children that lamb the children that could have been as lamb says uh, because he quoted alice uh, for seven years and these are the two dream children that could have been so these are the three instances of dream children and we know that the, these dream children they do not exist in reality they are just figments of uh, lamb's imagination and the next part being a reverie now this is something uh, obviously which i discussed in some way in class but i think some uh, new things i have added to this answer which you need to uh, pay attention to when you writing an answer on the title that is the reverie of course uh, i've i've explained the meaning of the term reverie that is being the daydream and you know the context because in this essay lamb was sitting in his bachelor armchair and fallen asleep and this whole essay is actually lamb dreaming about his visit in norfolk uh, about the children about his brother and everything now uh, this uh, dream children or dream sequence this is something that is not at all new when it comes to english literature because starting from the middle english literature if you remember your history uh, you had a text called the piers the plowman uh, which is a text of the middle english literature and which was itself a dream fragment the whole text is the author dreaming so this dream sequence or dream literature is something that is not new at all for uh, in when it comes to english literature and dreams uh, are important because dreams here in piers the plowman and of course in our text uh, dream children dream works as a narrative device it is a device of subconscious imagination and the things that the author might not have said directly can actually be said in dreams so dreams as a narrative device has quite a lot of function please pay attention to those when you write an answer um, for the title uh, a reverie and this is obviously optional because uh, i have uh, done with you the psychoanalytical or the freudian interpretation of uh, dream children so uh, you know a bit more about uh, the dream if you remember that class if you taken notes in that class so it is optional but if you can include some of the psychoanalytical aspects when it comes to dream uh, that will be a plus of course we move on to our second question that is uh, discuss lamps Uh, or elias uh, relationship with the other characters of the text and uh, we know that dream children is an essay where we actually have other characters who are very close to lamb so this is i i thought this as a very important question uh, the first thing when we try to address this question is ask ourselves ourselves whether it is really lamb or it is elia and i have i think cleared that confusion too in class when i have uh, given you the introduction for this uh, essay introduction to lamb and i have already uh, i have uh, given a quote that lamb says that these are the figments of my imagination this is very similitude not verity that quote i which i made you write that really works here and it kind of clears the confusion and tells you what lamb has told about the relationship and was elia really lamb or elia was someone else and as you know from that we have concluded that lamb uses autobiographical elements to actually uh, construct his literary art and uh, the essays of elia the series of essay that lamb has is the author's personal and private reactions which uh, he has recorded and put them into his literary work but he has maintained distance by using a pseudonym called elia but elia is uh, 
as we conclude is a supposed portrait of the author there is no way we can totally dissociate charles lamb from his pseudonym or his character this character called the this fictional character called elia now after this we will go on to the four relationships because this question was uh, discuss lamb's relationship with the other characters we have four we have identified four relations relations that lamb uh, has that lamb tells us in this uh, essay the first being mrs field who is as you know lamb's grandmother and uh, we can talk a bit about her character how she was uh, like uh, she invited lamb to uh, she was she, she was the caretaker of a huge mansion in norfolk and uh, well lamb visited because she invited lamb to spend his holidays in that mansion and that uh, she was loved and respected by all she was a very pious lady and then her cancer and her death so this was the first relation that lamb shared uh, with uh, that lamb talks about in this essay this is according to appearance if i may say the second relation that we have is john lamb who is charles lamb's elder brother and this one is very important because as i've told you in class this is a story of attachment and along with attachment also regret so this one is very important uh, La uh, john lamb was an older brother to charles lamb and uh, we know his story that uh, he lamb tells us that he carried lamb on his shoulder when lamb had some sickness in his legs uh, but lamb has a regret that when Uh, his brother john lamb had some sickness he didn't do enough for him he couldn't and now that sense of now that uh, john lamb is dead that sense of regret actually uh, dawns in on charles lamb and he realizes that he does he haven't done enough for his brother and he misses his brother and and he wants him to come back but uh, he he tells us that i have shared a bit of sweet relationship with my uh, elder brother uh, we have been together he had helped me but sometimes he was also very irritated irritated about me but although this is a bit of sweet relationship although there was a quarrel uh, between the two brothers now that he is dead that sense of regret works and lamb wants him back and lamb says that such is the distance between life and death that once someone is dead there can be no uh, coming back and he says that he wished uh, him to be alive again he wished john lamb to be alive again with that we come to the third relationship that is alice dublu uh, we know that this is alice winsterton Uh, the woman who lamb courted for 7 years but couldn't marry and here again this is a very important relationship that lamb shares in this essay and there is also this sense of regret this sense of guilt uh, the sense of loss rather that he has courted alice for 7 years uh, courted with coyness courted with difficulty with denial but ultimately Uh, he couldn't marry although they planned a future although lamb has had planned a future with her with her as the wife maybe he thought about the two children that he is going to have but that relationship didn't work out for some reason and the marriage didn't happen the fourth relationship that charles lamb shares in this essay is the two children Alice and John these are the dream children of Alice and Charles Lamb and this is the most important relationship because this also carries the central theme of the essay dream children about lamb's unfulfilled desire for parenthood which expresses itself this subconscious desire expresses itself in the dreams so this is uh, once again very important and this lamb shares a very fatherly relationship with the two children uh, in the in the very 
first line of this essay we see that children love listening to the stories and two children alice and john they 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 crawl about and they uh, get on lamb's lap and they are demanding to listen to stories about lamb's childhood and they continuously react to these stories which adds to the dramatic effect of the essay uh, but at the end of the essay uh, the climax we realize that these uh, children actually do not exist these children are only conceived in memory these children are only what could have been and uh, with that with that realization we uh, know about this ultimate sense of loss that lamb shares that lamb writes about in this essay the third we move on to the third question uh, discuss this essay as a journey from pleasant reminiscence to a reality of regret and loss and if you look carefully uh, at this question this is basically the central theme this can be also asked as a critical appreciation now we'll we'll discuss some of the themes uh, which are dominant in this essay uh, the first is the theme of regret and loss um, the that is the central theme of this essay about the children not existing and all then is the reminiscence and dwelling in the past as you know this is one of the most important character of lamb's uh, lamb's uh essays that he dwells in the past and he likes to talk about the past this the essays are also a fictionalized autobiography this is another important theme of the essay and the uh, these autobiographies this fictionalized autobiographies they record the personal and the private thoughts and feelings about uh, the author of the author now the part pleasant reminiscence from a this movement from pleasant reminiscence to a reality of regret and loss this is talking about a movement that happens in all the four parts of the story and if you look carefully if you if you divide the story into four parts and if you look carefully at these four parts you will notice that this is the movement that happens in all these parts now the first is great grandmother mrs field and in the beginning we we uh, we see that she is a dancer in the youth and then she grows into a pious lady respected by everyone she knows the psalms by heart and from that there's a decline because she has cancer and then she dies so this is the first one the se- the same the same movement happens in the second one it's about the the elder brother john lamb he was a young and handsome and spirited youth and lamb says that he was a king among us and from that it declines into a sickness a very painful amputation and lamb's death so this is again the same movement from a pleasant reminiscence a happy time to regret and loss and pain the third one too is the same thing about beautiful the, sorry the beloved alice uh, winsterton who was lamb's beloved she was a young beautiful woman and lamb call lamb calls her fair alice lamb was in love with her and he courted her for 7 years but then this relationship too declines because they couldn't marry and then she married someone else and then comes this very painful line children of alice called bathroom father so this is one the last one is obviously that heightens this theme of regret and loss from a pleasant reminiscence to a regret and loss that children the two children john and alice they loved l- listening to stories they crawled on his lap and it's a very beautiful father child relationship that lamb portrays in the beginning of this essay but then towards the end we realize that they are just dreams of what could have been they do not exist in real life and these children they slowly fade away from lamb so this movement appears in all the four parts of the story 
this movement from pleasant reminiscence this movement uh, is from dream to waking up uh, this movement happens between dreaming and waking up so dreams signify an escape into this pleasant reminiscence a happy time an escape into this happy time to waking up to this these harsh realities of regret and loss and this movement can be traced in all the four parts of the story so these are the three questions that was for the soup, uh, for the dream for dream children the first essay we move on to the super animated man and the first question discuss how far charles lamb essay the super animated man brings about the frustrations of a literary writer in a commercial employment and this i have already discussed in class uh, frustrations of literary writer in a commercial employment this is again the central theme of this uh, essay and this can be also asked as a critical appreciation so the language of the question might change so these are the points that you can write answering when answering this answer so you discuss lamb's life as a clerk the tedious 10 11 hours a day the confinement theme that is there that he had to work for 10 11 tedious hours every day that it continued for 36 years and without really a holiday holiday was an alien concept to lamb he says that it's not available for him at all it was only available for children so and whenever he got a holiday he got very few number of holidays the one being sundays and one at easter one at christmas christmas and one week uh, when he got a holiday so but the holidays were wasted because after overworking for so long he couldn't really enjoy his holidays and that brings on to the psychological devastation of overworking i'm talking about the nightmare that lamb says he has because after working for these 10 12 hours a day when he goes back and sleeps uh, he finds himself working at the same desk and that is a a bit too devastating uh, psychologically and the next part of the essay is after his retirement after his superannuation and his going back to his workplace it's kind of revisiting that same old toxicity because he says he i missed my old chains because this toxicity this uh, confinement this chains become a part of his identity as at as a whole and post retirement he is directionless he doesn't know what to do he has all the time by himself but now he is an old man with nothing really happening in his life the value of the holiday was lost and every day was a holiday now because uh, there was no work and then there is a theme of sauntering or the concept of the flaneur that I have discussed in class and frustrations of a literary writer because as you know Lamb was Lamb started out as a poet and uh, his career didn't work out because of his troubles and because he had to work from a very young age and he lived his life working for others there was no space for creativity at all he worked as a clerk although he was a literary man he worked as a, as a clerk in a counting house and he checked accounts for 10 11 hours a day there was no space for any literary work it resulted in a loss of creative drive and confidence as much as he says towards the end of this essay that he considers these volumes of bookkeeping uh, the volumes of his accounts that are there in the shelves of his library he says these are the works for which he will be remembered and this bookkeeping these volumes of bookkeeping they, these are his legacy and his literary works are his failures and he says that they would end up in some obscure collection of a wandering bookseller so this uh, was the state lamb was in after working after overworking rather for 36 years 
we move on to the second question that is critically comment on the playful and the serious elements of the super animated man this was asked in cu in 2012 once and even in the next year the very next year the same question was asked only the language was changed now it was critically comment on the humor and pathos elements in lamb but you will have to remember that that uh, this is the chief style of lamb and this question can also be asked as a whole like uh, uh, it can be asked uh, as critically comment on the playful and serious elements of lamb's essays so this question applies actually to both the essays in your syllabus humor and pathos as you know humor is something that is amusing uh, creates fun and pathos is something which evokes pity and sadness now in super, because this question is about super animated man i have tried to give you some uh, some examples from the text where we find humor and pathos like humor was the first one when he was really terrified that he would now get fired because of his age and inaccuracy instead when he was all afraid and shaking he goes to the meeting and he is only retired and that too with a monthly pension that is a really comic comic scene then he calls himself a poor carthusian carthusian is something which is a type of monk returned upon the world carthusian is something he actually describes his 36 work years of work life as uh, the life of a monk and now returned to the world is after his super animation he visits the bond street which is a fashionable side of london at 11 o'clock in the morning when he has nothing to do post his super animation then he thinks of christening his son naming his son as nothing to do because he says that it is best the person the uh, person is at his best time when he is doing nothing so he wants to name his son nothing to do and uh, there was also a part about the lucrician pleasure he says that now that he is out of work he has nothing to do he will catch a man in his occupation when a man is very busy he will catch him and he will talk to him and he will make sure that the man is late these are some of the funny moments in the essay the pathos on the other side is the tragedy that he wasted uh, so many years of his life working in the county house without vacation without holidays overworking for 10 11 hours a day uh, there is a theme of confinement and when he says wild animal animals in cages that is also really pathetic uh, it leads to some health and psychological crisis like uh, when he goes back and dreams that he's still working and he's wasted his life working for others that is the greatest tragedy of his life and a shunted literary career as we know that lamb started out as a poet but he had to give up on his uh, literary career because he had to work from a very early age we move on to the third questions charles lamb's descriptions of london in the super animated man now i have already discussed the first one like uh, the first part of this uh, in the class in the introduction when i said that there is a stark difference between wordsworth and lamb now wordsworth we can we you can use this uh, part as the introduction if this question comes that wordsworth uh, is about a refuge in nature and wordsworth belief in pantheism his preoccupation with nature lamb in a stark contrast he was born and raised in the city he in the middle of london and the crowd the city the shops these are what interest uh, interests lamb and he represents these in his essay the crowd uh, he interpreted this human life with its joys and sorrows and this is what he likes to write about in his essay in a stark contrast to wordsworth who writes mainly about nature and some parts of morality now there is very specific descriptions of places in the super animated man the first one being his office at the mincing lane which is a fictional reality because actually he worked as a clerk in the east india company and that office was in the leaden hall street then he also describes the city on a sunday which he really hated the church bells and 
For Lamb, it was a very gloomy atmosphere. He says that he missed the cheerful cries of London and the closed shops on Sunday. It repelled Lamb. Uh, he liked the city, Lamb liked the city with its buzz and stirring murmurs of the street. That's how he liked London. And this, these are very important descriptions of the city that is in the superannuated man. He describes the sights and sounds of London. And in the middle, there is a small part about his vacation at Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire is obviously not in London. It is a county in southern England. And he calls it native fields. Uh, it was a holiday destination for Lamb. And this actually set this part of Hertfordshire actually separates the two earlier parts. Lamb in his pre-retirement, pre-superannuation life and Lamb's description of London rather in his pre-retirement life and Lamb's description of London in his post-retirement life. In the middle of these two comes this vacation in Hertfordshire County. Post-retirement, uh, Lamb, the, the description of the city changes a little. Now he has unlimited time in his hands and he can do whatever he wants. And it is very important uh, to look at Lamb's loneliness and solitude because as you know that he had remained a bachelor all his life. He lived with his sister only, his parents his brother everyone was dead and in this solitary life it is the city that almost is becomes a close associate of lamb and the city almost becomes his friend uh, now he goes to bond street at 11 o'clock in the morning uh, he visits a bookstall at soho and bond street and soho these are fashionable parts of London where leisure is possible and now leisure is possible for Lamb because he is retired, he has nothing to do. He also described other streets like the Fish Street Hill, the Fenchurch Street and uh, he visits also Mincing Lane once again, uh, his old office. He talks about the Elgin Marbles and Elgin Marbles in London, it is uh, a fragment, a remnant of uh, Greek culture bought by St. Elgin. So these are some important locations of London that uh, Lamb tells about in this essay. With this, uh, we end the questions specific to the two essays that you have. We move on to the third part of this lecture and this is the questions on Charles Lamb's essays as a whole with reference to the two essays uh, that you have in your syllabus. And the first question we have here is discuss Charles Lamb's art of the personal essay or this question was also asked in 2014 in a different language. It says discuss Lamb's style as an essayist or assess Lamb as an essayist. So, here are some observations that I have found while reading the two essays, some, some common observations that can be used here. Now the first one, the essays are autobiographical or rather fictionalized autobiography as we like to call it. Uh, Elia was used as a pseudonym to maintain a distance between uh, the author and his work. Lamb was a lifelong friend of Wordsworth and Coleridge. He was an admirer of Wordsworth. And this, in this answer, you need to know how you place Lamb in the Romantic tradition. Because uh, Lamb, uh, because you know the Romantic tradition or the Romantic movement was uh, mainly uh, about poetry. So, Lamb as an essayist, how he fits into this romantic movement should also be considered when you answer this um, question of Lamb's personal essay or discuss Lamb as a romantic essayist. And uh, this is one uh, thing that uh, that is common in all his essays. Uh, it is a blend of pathos and humor that can this uh, character of Lamb can be found in all his in both his essays uh, the other being reminiscence or thinking about the past 
and you know that lamb in from lamb he says he loves dwelling in the past and uh, recalling memories of youth and childhood which was another important uh, uh, part of his essay uh, there is also a preoccupation with death because in dream children as you know he talks about two deaths mainly uh, the death of his uh, great grandmother and also the death of his brother and maybe also the death of his two children when they fade away there is escapism in lamb's essay uh, and especially in dream children because dreams are an escape from the harsh realities of lamb's life and lamb's essays are actually very evocative because uh, like in dream children all through the essay we see the children uh, like playing about crawling on his lap reacting to the stories and we think that they exist uh, such as lamb's language but in the end we realize that they don't and they are only dream children figments of his imagination so evocative Uh, language and style is one of lamb's characteristics with that we move on to the second question how far do you consider lamb's essays to be autobiographical this is a bit tricky because um, obviously lamb uh, essays are autobiographical but there is no way we can directly tell so because when lamb was asked about this is elia really lamb he uh, clearly denied uh, that direct relationship so but obviously it is a fictionalized autobiography that that's what we can call it and uh, when writing this essay please uh, address this uh, address this problem is elia actually charles lamb and quote write that quote uh, which i gave you in class about very similitude not verity but there are autobiographical elements in both the essays of charles lamb will begin with the autobiographical elements that uh, is in dream children now obviously there are changed names or incomplete names like john l we know that it's john lamb alice w it's alice winston bridget is lamb's sister mary lamb and you also have l dash 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 and b dash 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 these are the two uh, people that appear in super animated man they are part of they are the uh, i think the owners of lamb's uh, office uh, he says that he had an office in the mincing lane that is obviously not true because we know that he actually worked in the east india company which was at leaden hall street uh, now but there are uh, elements of um, autobiographical elements now we discussed the autobiographical elements in dream children first Mm, the first is the elder brother john lamb and uh, their death uh, sorry the two the two characters great uh, grandmother field uh, who is the grandmother and john lamb who is the elder brother and their death this is autobiographical because they actually existed in lamb's life john uh, john lamb his brother actually was there and he died the next is alice winston alice winston also existed in lamb's life he quoted her for uh, for a specific number of years he says in the essay it's for 7 years but we know that they were in uh, in this relationship for a long amount of time and the only thing that doesn't exist in his real life are the two children john and alice but they were conceived in memory but um, it, it it is very possible it's very much possible that when they were in love alice and charles lamb they had already uh, decided maybe on the names of the children that they are going to have so it's 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 tragic but uh, this existed in real life now we move on to the autobiographical elements in super animated man we know that lamb was a real life clerk in east india company so his working as an apprentice and a uh, and a and a clerk was not really a uh, fiction and he worked real life as a clerk in the east india company and he worked for a very long duration although we don't know for how long it was in his real life 
in the essay he says that it's for 36 years and the most important thing is the family incidents the real life family incidents that actually leads to lamb going for work at such an early age and that is something i have discussed in class that uh, uh, Charles Lamb, there were three siblings, their father died in a very early age and uh, John Lamb, the elder brother, he ditched his family and went away and Mary Lamb, the elder sister to Charles Lamb, she was the only uh, earning member of the family, she was this nurse and later on I've told you about that incident, that accident rather which happened in his family that one day in a fit of insanity Mary Lamb stabbed their mother to death and this she was uh, she was called insane by the mental asylum and uh, it, it was Lamb's responsibility of becoming his legal guardian uh, and took the full responsibility of Lamb's sister Mary Lamb and then Lamb was the only earning member of his family and this actually led uh, to a certain shunting of his literary career because he had to sacrifice his literary career and that is for real and that is really autobiographical. So these are some autobiographical elements that actually happens in real life and finds their representation in Lamb's work. So with this we come to the end of this uh, session, this online lecture session. Uh, we'll have to start with Victorian age soon as this is the part of the romantic essay the two poems from John Keats and the two essays from Charles Lamb that I've completed with this lecture so next we'll start with Victorian age and till then uh, be safe thank you